Hey everybody, today I'm gonna to make a video about testimonials. I got a fantastic email from a client yesterday. She sent me a list of testimonials for her new website and was getting asking me to help sort of pick through them. What are, what are the ones that should end up on the site? So I thought I'd make a video about it. Now the first thing with testimonials is why do we use them? And the reason is that potential clients, so prospects, when they're late in the buying stage, so they're just about to make a decision, they are very doubtful and skeptical. They have loads of objections. And I'll show you some of the typical objections that an architecture client might have. Will the architect respect our budget and fears about overspending? Will the architect consider the functionality of the building above the aesthetic? Will they listen to us and respect our ideas and tastes? Will they prioritize our project? Will the architect take necessary precautions to ensure the project runs smoothly? There's a whole bunch of different objections that are floating around out there. Uh, and you know, I've just picked a few, but these are real and they are doubts that are running through somebody's mind. Now, why is that different to when somebody's early in the buying stage, when they're pretty far away from making a, uh, from making a decision or deciding to hire you? Um, how's their mindset different? When somebody's early in the buying stage, they want to be inspired. They want to know that you're creative. They want to know that you've got lots of good ideas. They want to know that you're going to just, you know, have a touch of genius on their project and create something that's just one of a kind and incredible and all of those things. And if they start to see at that early stage, you saying, we listen to our clients, we respect them, we prioritize the projects, no matter how small the budget, people start to get skeptical early in the buying cycle because they think things like, well, you know, that's not really the kind of, I'm not inspired by that. I'm reassured by that. And when you're being reassured, when you're wanting to be inspired and you've got a very optimistic state of mind, it actually makes you a little bit doubtful of that architecture firm. How creative are they? How inspired is their thinking? Do they just respond to what their clients want? Don't they inject a sense of you know, um, magic into the process. I don't think I like this firm, right? So there's a timing thing. But if you're dealing with a late stage prospect and you come along and say, we're inspired, we, we you know, we, we, we just, we blend all these elements together and create magic and say that to somebody who's just close to considering working with you, they also become incredibly doubtful and skeptical. They go, oh, these people, they're just, you know, they're just senseless artists they have no idea what they're doing. What about my brief? What about my budget? You know, so there's a timing thing and depending where somebody is in that journey depends on how you should think about, you know, framing your business. So you want to be kind of strategic about that and think a little bit about segmentation. But anyway, more to the point about testimonials. That's what they're there to do. Late stage buyer, reassure them to common objections. Reassure them that they're making a good choice. They're not taking a big risk. They, they have no reason to doubt you. And the reason we use testimonials for that is because it lends a legitimacy having somebody else, you know, proving it, suggesting it, saying it without you having to say, your, say it yourself. Um, because it just adds a sort of an authority from an existing client. I mean, it's all obvious, right? But this still is a point that a lot of us miss, that it's about answering objections. So in the process of gathering testimonials, you should be pretty strategic about, I know what objections I'm trying to answer. So I need to prompt my ex-clients to give me to give me testimonials around these themes or concepts. So let's go through it a little bit. Let's take an example of a really bad testimonial. I've just made up three testimonials here to give you a kind of a bad, okay, and really good, in my opinion. Bad, bad testimonial. Dave is a great, is such a great listener. That's a bad testimonial. It doesn't expand on that. It doesn't add any detail. It doesn't explain to me in what way I'm a great listener. So not a good testimonial. I don't take a lot from that. It does not reassure me. It does not give me confidence. It does not convince me. It's not a convincing testimonial whatsoever, but this is the most common I see because when unprompted and un, you know, explain further what you mean to a testimonial giver, they'll typically just keep it short and sweet and they'll say, Dave is a great listener. And if you're extracting reviews from Howes or Google reviews or wherever, and you're just copy pasting and putting them on your site, you're gonna get a lot of that, but it's not convincing. So let's look at a slightly better example. We spoke to a lot of architects and Dave really listened to our brief. Okay, so that's a little bit better because it's got this kind of story plot 
We spoke to a lot of architects. So this is starting to convince me a little bit more because there's a sense of comparison in there. There's a bit of a relatable story uh, and it suggests that I'm a better listener than other architects, which is a little bit better than just saying I'm a great listener, okay? That's a slightly better example, but let's look at this big fat example here, which I think is a good example of a testimonial. I'll just read it really quickly. It was our first time working with an architect and we were worried that they wouldn't listen to our opinions on design and just do what they wanted instead. Not Dave. He suggested we start the process with a design research session where we poured through books and magazines to gauge our tastes and opinions on design. We then visited the NGV together to look at famous art and furniture. It was fantastic. He taught us so much about architecture and we taught him so much about our favorite artists and designers. In the end, it felt like a collaboration and it was such a joy to discover ideas. We suggested turn up in the final design as it was being built. Okay, super cheesy testimonial, super, oh my God, you know, as practicing architects, you'll probably be like, oh geez, give me a break with this. <laughs> you know, go to the NGV together, looking through magazines. What a lot of fun, right? But in terms of listening and making the client feel included, this is a very convincing testimonial. And for somebody who has that as a main objection, my objection is that I'm gonna be neglected in this process, that I'm just cutting checks to some architect who's exploring their vision and doing their thing and humoring me, rather than really making me feel like I'm included, like my ideas matter, like I have opinions on design, you know, things that a segment of clients certainly do prioritize. They really wanna feel like they're getting that out of the process and that their, their stamp is on the building as well when they're in this late stage uh, buying situation. This is a very convincing, specific testimonial. It is obviously several times longer than these other ones. So it's not about volume of testimonials, it's about quality of testimonials. You put something like this next to a photo of the family looking beautiful and happy in their brand new house, and you say their names and where they are, uh, et cetera, et cetera. That's gonna be a very, very, very convincing testimonial around a major point of objection. You don't read that and go, oh, I wonder if this architect listens. I wonder if I should believe this testimonial. Is this very convincing? It's extremely detailed. So how do we get to testimonials like these? Well, it's just about being preemptive and strategic and thinking about what do I want to get out of this testimonial? What do I want to kind of coach my ex-client to say for me? And in this case, what we might do is begin by asking them questions related to the specific objections. So you might send them a question like, okay, in this case, um, do, do you feel that I listened to you and respected your ideas and opinions on design when we started our project together? Okay, so they might have a very simple answer. Yes, you did, it was fantastic. You're such a great listener, okay? That we might just get confirmation around that or a very, they might launch into a very small example, but we will prepare with follow-up questions. When they mention something specifically, you're such a great listener. You could say, could you explain what you mean by I'm a great listener? and get them to go further. Or do you remember a specific example where we did X? Do you remember a specific example of where I listened well to your ideas? Um, is there anything I did in my process that made you feel like you were being listened to? Um, how did my listening ability or how, how did the emphasis I place on listening to my client differ from your assumptions about the process when we first started to get a sense of, you know, when before this, I thought architects would X, but it turns out that Dave Y, you know, so we can start to get some more um, specific ideas going on. But these are the kind of things you can use to kind of coach the witness a little bit, lead the witness. And I think it's quite important to do that to make sure that you just, at the very minimum, are getting your clients to expand on what they've said. So typically where my clients, architects, collect testimonials from their old clients, they'll send them an email with a couple of questions. That's great. For that, you can still do that for this to work. It just means coming back with another email, replying with further questions. Say, oh, that's great. Um, could I ask you a few more questions about the statement you made in your last email? And then dig into those to get more. Now, eventually what you may end up doing is sort of chopping and putting these together. You may even edit uh, and send it back to them and go, I've made a couple of changes to just, you know, put this all together as one testimonial for my website. Do you approve of the way that this is written? Do you think it reflects you know, your sentiment or feeling about my practice, perfect. It does, okay, great, it goes on the website. Um, so that's just a bit of an example, um, just touching on this issue. Hopefully it's something that is, uh, you know, gonna, gonna give you a little bit more direction when you're thinking about testimonials for your website to, uh, to reassure people in that late 
buying stage where they're doubtful and they're skeptical and, they're, and they, they think, you know, the risk of failure is extremely high. Um, yeah, let me know what you think and I'll see you soon.